Affairs, I'm Christopher Brown. This past weekend, municipal leaders from across Canada gathered in Calgary, Alberta, for the annual Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention. And today, we have some exciting news from the fourth day of that convention. In a tightly contested race, Kathy Valentino, the deputy mayor of Thompson, Manitoba, has been elected as third vice president of FCM. Valentino emerged victorious over two formidable candidates, Councillor Katie Berghofer of Strathcona County, Alberta, and Penhold, Alberta Mayor Mike Yargo. The vote was a close one, with Valentino securing 227 votes, Berghofer with 215, and Yargo with 198, highlighting the strong competition and the trust placed in Kathy's vision and leadership. Joining the FCM board as third vice president, Valentino steps into a pivotal role alongside Ottawa City Councillor Tim Tierney as second vice president, Vancouver City Councillor Rebecca Bly as first vice president, and Jeff Stewart, the deputy mayor of Colchester County, Nova Scotia, who has been elected as the new president of FCM. Now, we had the privilege of speaking with Kathy Valentino just hours after her announcement of her winning third vice presidency. We'll explore what this achievement means for her, for Thompson, Manitoba, and municipalities across Canada. She'll share her plans and aspirations, her thoughts on collaboration, and she intends to address the pressing issues facing our communities from coast to coast to coast. This is Municipal Affairs. Kathy, first off, I want to say congratulations on your extension into third vice president of FCM. How are you feeling? Well, a little bit overwhelmed, but super excited for the opportunity. I'm very thankful for everyone who put their support towards me. So it was a very close vote. What do you have to say about your other candidates who put their name forward? Well, we spent a lot of time together in the back green room, that they call it. So I got to know them, and they're very super nice people. And I appreciate that all three of us would do this and put our name forward. It just goes to show you that people want to step up and make a difference, and it was great. So what's job one now? Because now you're going to be meeting with the new board. This is like going into the lion's den a little bit. But what's job one for you? Because you made a passionate speech about keeping municipalities in their lane and keeping the other levels of government out of their lanes, out of the municipal lanes. What's your priority number one? Well, first off, Chris, job one is going to be going to the gala tonight. <laughs> okay. Let's be real. Okay. And uh, then I, my understanding is I'll be a little bit briefed on what my roles will be. So I'll have a better answer for you the next time you interview me because I really don't know until they brief me on what this whole getup is going to be and look for me. I think after this conference when everybody has some time for me. So I've got to ask a weird question, but I hopefully you know this. So does this mean you're no longer going to be uh, sitting as sec or vice president of AMM? Will you be stepping down to concentrate fully on FCM role? Absolutely not. I love AMM. I wouldn't have done this if I had to step off of AMM. I am passionate for the job of vice president of AMM, and I love working for President Blight and with my other vice president, Brad Saluk. So, no, I will not be. I am going to be able to do both. My life allows me to have this kind of a crazy life, so that's why I put my name forward. So we are on the last day of FCM, meeting with municipal leaders from coast to coast to coast. What does it mean for you to be at this convention, to speak to so many different municipal leaders from all parts of this country? I think what I really was overwhelmed with today, or this weekend, because we spoke as candidates three different times over the weekend. How many times people came up to me after we spoke and said that they either were born in Thompson, grew up there and went to school for a bit, who have an aunt or an uncle who still lives there or know somebody who lives there. I was completely overwhelmed. I have so many people that now have reached out to me that have some kind of connection to Thompson, Manitoba, but it clearly shows that Canada is really such a small country and that we are all very passionate the way people would come up and speak to me and I was completely overwhelmed with that. Are you ready for the national stage a little bit? Because in four years time, you're gonna be taking over as president now. Yeah, absolutely am, and I, I am, and I think that part of the motivation is that I really think we have a good opportunity for municipalities with a federal election on the horizon, so I think it's going to be a real learning experience, but really interesting and a real opportunity that we got to jump on for municipalities. So you're going back to Thompson probably in the day and a half, but the work doesn't stop tomorrow. Even though the, the uh, AGM is done, even though the convention is done, the work still continues. Now you've got this new role of advocacy on a national level. Is it going to be fun to bring Thompson issues to a national issue, uh, stage? 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm not going home in a day and a half because I have to do my district tours throughout the province of Manitoba with AMM. So I think I'm home on June 20th, just in time for summer and mosquitoes. So that's great. Uh, but absolutely, you know, it'd be really great. Just going to throw this out there that, you know, the board maybe should meet in Thompson, Manitoba, since uh, that's maybe where some of the leadership's going to come from, you know, throwing that out there. Throwing that out there on a perfect podcast. That's all I can say. But what, what, what do you hope that can, uh, delegates take away from this long week convention that they go back to their municipalities and start advocating because their work doesn't stop tomorrow either so what do you hope that the delegates take away from this weekend? right well one of the things i think is that fcm really offered some breakout ses- sessions and some information sessions that were a little bit more related to issues that municipalities are going through through right now so i'm hoping that what they've learned from some of those presenters and the engagement is things that they can take back to their own municipalities to get them moving and and it just helps you to be able to network so that you think okay people are other communities are going through what we're going through maybe at a different scale but all of our issues are the same so i think that just gives you that momentum and you network and you have some connections now that you can rely on to talk to and, and look back on to help you move forward good stuff Kathy, it's a pleasure. Congratulations once again. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Winnipeg, but I'm looking forward to seeing you across FCM as well. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing you too. You do a great job, and I really do appreciate your time. Thank you. Now, before we let you go, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for allowing us to attend this year's convention here in beautiful Calgary, Alberta. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now, wherever you're watching this or listening to this. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs from coast to coast to coast. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.